All right, welcome back to another plan explain. Um, it's been a minute. I said every video, but um, gonna try and record multiple today. I don't know. I guess I'll let you know, you guys know in the community thing when I have multiple posted. I'm obviously planning on getting back to once every three days, but there's been some stuff. I post these basically for like no, just just the sole reason, just to like post them for you guys I guess so it's not like the most profitable thing for me if anything it probably cost me money or it definitely does I can't see how I gain edge from it um, maybe in the long run I'll make back some of the edge I've lost but anyway um on this texture versus the wreck I don't mind just checking actually I don't mind just building it a bit just because in order to actually like be able to stack this guy yeah, he's gonna raise me. Obviously, the issue is we're kind of setting ourselves. The reason why this is bad in theory is you're setting yourself up really bad versus hands like 10 9, all this um, stuff like this. Because even if you hit, it's like. Because now I'm just tossing, so. But I thought versus a wreck, it wouldn't be the worst play. I'm just gonna big bet here, especially. Actually, with the club, without a club, I think you want to check back more here because it's a lower SPR, which means you're gonna want to have a hand that has a little more playability. Um, we're gonna use the number here for GG hands now. Call on that number, we're obviously just gonna call. Over better check here is preferred, but he's gonna go with the smaller size. I imagine if it's the smaller size, we're gonna call some queen highs with the spade. I think it's okay. You're gonna have to call a little more in position. Um, also, not to mention, just his range in general is different than, like, a button range, right? Like, he's gonna have way more trash. Alright, we're not gonna be able to play this, I think. Because we have too many already. Um, here versus the big bet. I still think we have to call all 10x, basically. Let me take it down. That's the value of position. Which is why I like small bit in position. It's, not, it's like, it's a double-sided uh, coin in the sense of... The reason why small bet out of position is preferred is because building the big pot um, out of position isn't necessarily the best, and it's also like basically a check. It's like a way to like kind of check, but like get value. Um, here the queen of hearts blocker I think is just really bad. Um, we're gonna have a lot of hands that are gonna have an eight or a nine here that a block the nuts and then b because this is a button hand, right? Um, a block the nuts and then b um, uh, what's it called? Like we're blocking just bluffs basically with the queen of hearts. You see, and then if we had like jack eight or there, like or ten eight there, um, we would have hit a straight. <coughs> so basically, we just block bluffs. We don't have any draws or sells. We also don't block values. So like, um, calling is always a spec, like a not a spectrum, but in the sense, if it's always relevant to the other hands you're gonna have in your range, right? In theory, like in practice, uh, maybe exploit your opponents for not bluffing or over bluffing. But uh, in theory, it's gonna come down to the hands you're gonna have. Like if I have a straight there, ninety eight percent of the time he shouldn't be bluffing me with much worse right or even let's say half the time right so it's always relevant on well there i'm gonna have a lot of easy hands with an easier time calling so maybe i don't have to call a hand like queen 10. also you'll find your opponent's bluffing frequencies really will depend on stuff like that too like if he thinks i'm gonna be calling a lot a lot of people are less likely to bluff when they think you're gonna be calling a lot because they don't think they're gonna exploit it on the back end they don't think you're going to take that extra step to not calling them. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, here. Um, can play limbs, but no point. There's a wreck, especially. Um, imagine this game's going to break. Um, here, he says it's extra down. I'm just going to call. Ace of hearts. Probably more likely to call with that, I imagine. Um, the issue is he kind of smashes this queen. So... We're gonna check and evaluate, but he he does he is kind of range betting. Maybe it's a worse vibe. Ah, we're cooked. But like you see what I'm saying? Like I guess he got value, so it's not the worst. It's not a good example, but yeah, I don't prefer small bet on that board, just because. <laughs> Maybe I'm not raising enough though. But th that's a board. There's gonna be a lot of bluffs on too, so it's just like, what's the point of raising? Like I don't know. I like the I like attacking with a bigger bet and actually playing checks, but a lot of people don't like to check on the flop. They prefer to play two street poker. Just fine, it's it works. Um 
I mean, if you're gonna check one, I imagine the nine of diamonds is okay, but I'm just gonna stick to this one. You can play, uh, I like the split here. I'll roll the lower number. Generally, the way this is gonna work is you're gonna have your value hands that really wanna bet big a lot of the time, and then you'll mix in some. And then you have a lot of your middling hands that'll, like, obviously, like, your upper sets aren't, and King Jack aren't gonna over bet, but. Like, I imagine sixes is gonna be close to pure. And then the way it works is usually your bluffs will mix, right? Because they're less determined by, like, what they get called by, etc. Like what they're isolating themselves against. Um, here I imagine you can just bet a third. He shouldn't have like any 3x in theory. Like ace 3 should be it. He shouldn't even have 3s really, so. Um, but that's a, but just because he should have it doesn't mean. In theory, that's just a mistake a lot of people make, which is in your advantage. Like it works if you're willing to exploit it. Basically, a lot of people call waste winning these pocket pairs in those positions. The reason why the pocket pairs actually go kind of go down in value versus some other positions when it's blind versus blind, because I'm through betting 10-7 offsuit and you call pocket threes. Like, wouldn't you rather you would rather just instead of calling pocket threes, call something a little better? You know what I'm saying? That typically isn't like, like if I have aces and ace king only, like you're not going to call. You don't like hands like ace jack as much, right? But if I'm three, if I'm bluffing with 10-7 off, jack seven off, then. Pocket threes becomes a pretty bad hand, right? Because you're out of position, you're gonna hit a set, and even when you hit a set, I have ten seven off, I just fold like unless I triple barrel bluff into you, which like obviously should happen a decent amount, but basically like the the, the the payoff is just not that good and the hand doesn't have that much playability for being out of position, right? Like most of the time you're not gonna wanna turn into a bluff. Especially since you have so many hands. Like, the reason why you turn pocket pairs into a bluff a lot of time is because it's smart because you don't have so many hands in the spot. So it's like, on certain runouts, you're going to end up with zero bluffs if you don't have those random airball hands, right? Like you will have with pocket fives. Like, if, like, the flush gets there and the straight draw gets there, it's like, well, what's he bluffing with now? You know what I'm saying? Well, that's when you have pocket fives. Like, you know, if it's one to a straight and the flush draw got there, it's like you wouldn't have any more bluffs. On, like, a Broadway board, right? Or something. But when you have super wide range, you can kind of... You, you have a lot of different ones. Well, good luck us. I don't really like the way he just threw the money in like that. Oh, I guess it... Let's go. Let's see. Starting off really slow here. It's okay. I've been better. Dude, I've been getting cooked in the all-ins. But I hit a bad beat drop off for 40k, so... Can't complain. But I've been getting cooked in the all ins like recently. It's insane. It's okay. We'll, we'll make it back. Okay, so here I check back flop. It's hard to get believed on a four. I mean, you could just kind of play this range where you're like, I, I checked a four. <laughs> now I'm going to go big. I do think he's kind of capping using me open, so. You know what? Let's just try stabbing this shit. Don't like it now. Because I find in the delay, it's like he's going to be folding a lot. Let's see how wide he floated turn. I don't think this is a great card to bluff on, so. Okay, so you just double check the jack. You see, like, eh, now that I know he's doing stuff like this, which isn't, like, necessarily the worst in theory, I'm just not going to delay too often with hands like that. I shouldn't, like, say that, but... Because there's two types of people, right? Like, it's like, okay, if he's just not going to bet for value himself, then I'm going to get to realize all my value, my uh, equity. Or, like, I'm, you can really exploit the value of position if you just check twice, right? You get to see all five cards whenever you want. At least you hit the biggest... Alright, so this guy just cold shoves. Sucks, because if you 4 bet, we would have left the flush draw. So wait, in here, BVB. Um, on a 1, we're going to just call here. And on the 5s and 3 aren't good for us. We rolled a 34. So we're going to have to be careful on this board. But at the same time, I think I can reverse level my opponent with that logic. Just gonna check here without an over. I think your bluffs are gonna come from and diamonds and then ASX. I really don't think you can get involved with a hand like this. Um, and on the river, if we do turn this hand into a bluff, the main advantage is we block hands like tens and nines and king ten suited. Okay, he just reopens, um, which are gonna be hands that would like to call a half pot size on the river. So probably play that. Or maybe you can size up. He's probably not supposed to check a king twice. It's okay. I'm not gonna play heads up here. I'm just gonna bet big. Well, with the club, I don't mind. Uh, you could probably play a different strategy here. 
Okay, we're really basically never big betting an 8, and he's almost calling all his 8 versus B75, so he could probably lead range here. And he does. Uh, without a spade here, it makes it more likely he might have a flush draw of some sort. Queen XF spades as well. Meaning that, like, when the Jack of Spades comes off... Also, we can't, like, we don't have as good properties to Bluff River. It's kind of good on the turn to not have a spade if you have a made hand, because it's like, okay, it's more likely he has a hand that might be bluffing, but... Okay, heads up. Oh, I guess on a low number. This one was like, this is a really high frequency 3 bet, though, so I probably should have found it. Tempted to float here, but also feels incorrect. So we're just gonna fold, because we don't have any high card value. We're like losing to everything. So. And we don't really get to like what a heart comes off, and the best we can do is like. Oh man, all these games are breaking. Okay. I don't know who left with button or what, so I'm just going to leave both hands at the same time. <sighs> give him one big blind, give him me the button on the other table, I don't know, I'm sorry if anyone, like... Okay, well, we got one table going. Okay, we got four, that's okay, right? I had some stuff on stars going, but... I just can't get in the waitlist. I'm open sitting the 1k right now, so maybe people will join. I, I don't know if I said this earlier, but we have two 510s, both purple, which means 1k. Okay, on an 83, I think this is still just a pure call. And I don't like one third from my opponent here, I was going to say. Um, here, okay, I'm trying to think about the properties of my hand. 5x is okay to check back almost, just because like the hands that we're going to be technically drawing versus if he's playing a bounce checking strategy, which I don't think he is. Argument hands that have a 5. Everything else is pretty much drawing dead, right? We don't mind giving him a card. Um, yeah, unless he has like a 6 or something, obviously we can get value from that. But if we're going to pick an ace to check, having one with a 5 is probably pretty good. I'm just going to call, obviously. And on the river, like how often do people bluff in this line? The issue is everything gets there. I don't think this is the spot you get check raised ever. Like, like by a non like super gto opponent um okay we should be able to th this should be good please tell me huds aren't on okay but i think i'm just gonna check it i just think there's a chance like i think he's gonna call hands like ace nine ace seven way more than he's gonna call like even like he might get scared with the hand like king three or something and i don't know how much one ace x i really believe he has here or, like, uh, King X hero calls he has. Because, like, everything we call just basically gets there. And, like, I don't know if he's going to... Like, I would check 5-4 and, like, 5-deuce back sometimes. But, like, I don't know if he expects me to. It's one of those spots where, like, you expect your more niche bluffs to work. You don't expect to get hero there. Because the hearts get there and everything. It's, like... I don't know. I wonder what it is in theory, though. I'm just thinking in practice more so versus the opponent. Which is also, like, sometimes you guys have questions for hands and I don't go too into certain players exploits i'm here with the diamonds worse i think especially since like actually when your clicker's bad you probably don't mind having the diamond because of properties but floating a hand uh, if the if the draw gets there to bluff it is usually he's talking to me I don't know what's going on. Alright. Some Ontario poker beef. This is actually hilarious. This is top content. Dude, I don't know what's going on, man. These guys are too cool for me. I want to be this cool. I want to be this cool. That's my goal. <laughs> I'm kidding, obviously. I'm already super cool, right? Guys, like, I'm the coolest guy. <laughs> I 
Um, AC is just like a frequency limp, so I'll keep it because I've been limping. On an on a 78, I think you can attack. It might be a little wide for first cutoff, but it's third of the time versus button. Imagine maybe like one fifth of the time. These guys are talking about live poker, which I played recently. Let me know if you guys want to see some live poker content. Not my favorite type of format, I'm gonna be honest, it's so slow. And it feels like 99% of everything is just like people guessing and then acting like they like had a reason for it. It's like, I don't know, like when 99% of the game is just having a hand because people like calling way too much. Like, I don't know. It's kind of weird, it's like everyone's like spewing but like also no one's bluffing, like their bluffs are like spews. Like, that is so weird. But. Recently, I've been kind of running hot at live poker, to be honest, but every time I run hot, it just feels like I, like, wanted to hit a hand, and I hit, and then I, like, value bet, like, I don't know. And then people just call me, like, I don't know. But I guess it's been happening, so I guess I can't complain. Maybe I'm just the best ever. I mean, if you're gonna check one back, it's this one, but versus a wreck, I don't see the point. I'm gonna bump this one up. Oh my god. This guy's like a little- this guy could jam ace king here though, and queens. Like, even though in think of theory you're supposed to be like, but I just know he's just not going to, so. Um, or like should mix, maybe. Good start. Oh my god. That's what they call me, the ace king master. They do call me that. Okay, he bets like two cents. I guess we just call. Oof, oof. I feel like he doesn't really have a boat. Unless he jams, I'll actually just toss. Like, I don't believe him. The w I'll actually believe him. Like, he's too good if he jams here. Okay, he bets two cents again. We're gonna raise him two cents. Now if he jams, I'm calling. Cause just cause, like, I don't know. He just had a straight, I'm assuming. Oh, he had just had... Yeah, I don't know why he's... I, I guess, like, people are really scared of checking. Like, thinking, like, oh, he's gonna... He's gonna bluff me if I check. But... Yeah. You're kind of cooked, bro. I'm gonna be honest. By the river, he's you're pretty cooked. Let's be real here. That hand's pretty cooked by the river. It's hard for me to have a hand that... Even, like... Like, your hand's a bluff now on the river. I guess he bet two cents on the turn, so like technically I could have some bluffs, maybe. Like some like like ace king with a diamond bullshit, right? Like I guess I have it. But. but in general, that's why you just jam with the block bets, because most of the time on the river it's hands like that, like from the recreationals. Oh, my mobilytics that I've tried to uninstall four thousand times for the last three years open. I'm just gonna call here on a 50. Oh my god, BBJ. There's a chance if he has kings or jacks. I could just do the miracle. I could just hit him bang, bang, bang. I'm just saying. You put an ace out there. He bet really small. Ace? Ace ball? Check. Check. We, were we actually two outs off? I have a feeling. The way he played it... Such a nerd. I wanted to see what he had. I don't think he's bluffing. But like, also like... I don't think I can fold my hand, let's be real. Like, I actually can't fold in theory, right? The issue is I've been playing so much, like, I've been studying enough, and I've just been mainly purely exploiting, like, th this guy underbluff, but, like, actually, does he check an ace on the turn? Like, it's kings sometimes. I don't know, man, I'll call, I'll be the fish. Yeah, he's just a genius, bro. It's just when I'm recording, I don't like overfolding. Which is probably not the worst thing ever. Everyone calls me a station, I swear, I, every hand I just want to toss my cards. 
Like, Jesus, guys. Everyone's like, oh, they're exploiting you, Carter. You're, you, or they don't, you guys don't know my name. That's my name. But they're exploiting you. You call way too much. I don't know. Maybe there. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm just calling. If I'm calling anything but an ace there, I'm calling too much, I guess. <laughs> if you don't call the nuts, maybe a nine. Call the nine. Sometimes you're just cooked by the deck for a while, guys. That's just what happens. And honestly, if you can be making exploited folds, you should be making exploited folds. Like, a lot of people have to, like, ah, play theory, I'll even out. Like, but I really do think, like, your win rate can skyrocket if you just... He's not bluffing here. I'm not calling. Or he's not bluffing enough. Just because I have bluffs. Like, you gotta remember, if a guy is bluffing 10% of the time, and it's, like, a perfect combo, you should just operate on the assumption he's not bluffing. Unless you have the nuts. Unless you have a hand that beats value. Because, okay, if you have a hand that beats value... And they're never bluffing. Well, then you have to beat enough value. But if they, you, you have a hand that beats value and they could be bluffing, well, then you should probably call. It's like the one difference I would say. If they're never bluffing, then like it's a certain recreational or it's a certain reg that you just know will, like has to have the nuts here to bet. Like a, like maybe it's a flush board or something. Then uh, and he wouldn't jam if he didn't have the ace or something. You know what I'm saying? Then maybe you can make some insane folds. But if they can't have the bluffs, you kind of have to call there even with the value. Like that, I'd say that's the one difference. But as far as bluff catchers go, if you don't be value, and they don't bluff enough, just don't call. Unless it's a board where maybe they have a lot of natural bluffs, but stop giving people the benefit of the doubt who don't deserve it, I guess is what, what, what I was trying to say there. Like, that board, like, you have to be pretty creative to play, to, to be willing to bluff in that way. Like, a lot of people might go thin for value with kings, and they'd be like, ah, oh, yeah, genius, thin bet. But they're not bluffing enough. And it's even worse if they're betting kings there, right, for me to call queens. The thing is, like, I, I, I think for a lot of players, there's not, not an appeal in bluffing like this, because they think they might get heroed by all pairs above a 9, and any hand below a 9 doesn't even play, so it's like, why do you even want to bluff a king high hand at that point? You, you can kind of just take your showdown. So it's really hard for a lot of people to have enough bluffs there, so... I don't know. That's why I don't mind folding queens, but I'm recording, so... And it's 1k, like... Um... Gonna... Here, when he checks back, check twice, he reopens. I'm gonna call the sevens here. And I here, I guess we just take showdown. It's always a nice spot, we're gonna take it. I guess here, I just bump it to 20 and call off. Like, Okay, it looks like no one wants to play with me. Um, Without a heart, I guess we just fold. A lot of people don't have enough non-king high X type of hands. What? This is aces. There's no way. It's aces. I, I, I just can't imagine. Like, I've been in this spot before and you don't want to jam. It looks too nutted. I'm just going to check for them. Swear to God. I, I'll call once. I don't know. So we're cooked. We're cooked. We have queens in the spot and we're just cooked. I actually just can't imagine another hand because this guy's gonna jam sometimes, right? He knows that. Like, it's not ace king, right? Like, maybe, maybe I sometimes I give people too much credit. Okay, I don't want to overbet here, right? I mean, it makes sense with our specific hand, but like, realistically, does he have a king that much? Like, I don't know. I think it's just AA, and he knows I'm drawing dead. Yeah, it's just aces. I'm gonna type so he'll show. Dude, there's no way. I'm gonna I'm gonna find out what he said later. I'll literally pay money and I'll let you guys know in the comments. There's just no way. Like, why would you flat ace king when the other guy's gonna jam? I call and then what? Like you're just like, like I don't know. Because if you don't have aces in a spot like that, don't lie. You would assume the other someone else has aces. He knows if he jams, like I can just fold any. Like like it just feels sus to to jam. I was in the spot earlier, but I just jammed because like I realized like how nutted flatting looks. There's no way. And then to bluff Ace King, like a lot of people would just take their showdown because they don't expect me to fold queens on that spot. Like, I don't know. Maybe like obviously there's a chance he just insanely leveled everyone, but like, I'm so like I don't know.
Like what? Like what other hand are you just comfortable flatting? Like it just looks seems so like from that spot. Like UTG open three bet. Okay, it should be a, okay. Okay, we're chopping. I'm gonna DM. I'm gonna DM the guy I was playing with. Like, <laughs> dude, I don't know. The flat is just so nutted. It's just so nutted. Like I don't know. Anyway, back to back to recording because I'm getting too distracted, DMing and stuff, having too much fun. Dude, if it's misclick preflop, like, cause, I don't know, like, that'd be so fun. Imagine it's misclick. I feel like when you misclick, it's raised, though, right? Am I trolling? Like, that's how I misclick, cause I accidentally hit the enter key. And I don't have that turned off, and I'm a dumbass, and it's probably costing me, like, so much money. But, whatever. Like, probably a disgusting amount. Like, it's one thing when you're playing, you're like, ugh, a couple big blinds. But when you, like, think about it in real world money, you're like, god, that's a lot for a misclick. But I guess it just, like, kind of goes into my win rate, right? Like, that's, how, that's the way I, like, justify it to myself. Like, every hundred thousand hands, I'll have a misclick or something. Or look, probably more than that. He said I misclicked free. No way he misclicked free. There's no way. There's no way. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I actually don't believe it. Unless, unless it's misclick with aces. That's, like, the only thing I see. We misclick with aces? Sure. Okay, versus this guy, like, I don't know. We block the bluffs. That's the thing, we just block bluffs and, like... Oh, you guys are gonna think I'm the biggest nick, because I just wanna fold everything. But, like, technically in theory, right, you guys can understand why, like, ace-5 would be even a better call here, right? And we're gonna have all of them, so it's, like... Ace-queen's better, ace-king's better. The issue is, like... If he's bluffing with a lower ace of diamonds too and the nine comes off and we're chopping now, it's tough. There's just a lot of things to... I don't know. People are just so nitty on these ace high boards. Like, I'm, I'm, showing, I'm showing too many ways to exploit me, but they won't, so it's whatever. No shot. What did you have? This shit's insane. He misclicked? I got so owned. Just keep spamming the fish emoji at me. Anyway, I'm sorry if like people don't. Uh, on a 19, just gonna fold this. It should get in here sometimes. Um, I'm sorry if this is not as good of a video. I don't know. Sometimes I watch them back. I'm like, Ugh. that's why I post a little less because I do try and record, but because I kind of wing it. Which like obviously we know my videos aren't the highest quality. Like they're not designed to be. Because I try and wing it, some of them it's, sometimes it's just too bad. I'm like no one's gonna ever want to watch this. Like. I don't know, but I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna end this one in ten minutes, and then I'm going to record another. So, hopefully, you guys get one in three days. I don't know. The reason why I don't post that often is I travel to two different places, um, because I stay with my girlfriend a good amount, and when I'm when I'm at my girlfriend's, I don't record well, basically. So if I'm there for a week and I don't have enough videos, that's basically why. It's like the only reason I don't post as much. If I was always here, I would post way more. I could post every day. You guys know what I was doing every day for a while, so. But yeah. But also, honestly, the growth on my channel from posting once a week has been also pretty decent. As the videos are... Normally the videos will die after like two days. I don't know, the algorithm's weird, but... Because like, even though I'm just posting just to post, um... 
obviously I still want people to watch my videos. It's kind of the point. Like anyone who's saying their posts for no one to watch, like, I don't know. Especially at this point. I think when I first started, I was kind of posting to study myself, like watch my thought process and learn from it. Now I feel like I owe it to you guys to keep posting. Like, I guess that's kind of how I feel about it. Well, he never told me what he had. I feel like if he had like seven deuce off, he would show me. Right? There's no way. I, I, I like. I get it. Like, I get like being like confident and like not sh not feeling the need to show, but like. Just seems so aces to me. Okay, here I'm just gonna mainly call. Like in theory, I, I imagine not from these spots, but from UT, basically spots where you run out of four bit bluffs, because like the opponent's range is too strong for you to four bit bluff like as much trash profitably. Ace queen suited stuff becomes a little more. I'm just gonna go small because I want a size that ace king can call when an ace comes off. I don't see the point in like betting half. What what? Oh, if he has jacks, I get a little more value. But like I don't know. Probably go smaller. I guess we can go half pot now for the same reason. It's like, what's the point of sizing up, right? When you basically know what they have. And it's other spots where they kind of have a lot more hands, like, oh, we might be mixing in Queen Jack suited in his checks. I know this guy's not, so it's like, why would I do that? You know what I mean? I think that's an important thing once you like because sometimes it's like you can tunnel too much on uh how do i say this uh what, what should be the size here it's like this should be the size if x y and z right like if he has more hands in his range that like that's the size to attack it with but if you change his range like you can kind of logically think of like the issue is i think a lot of people will this the issue with people who don't study enough is they will misrepresent what a range will look like and then base sizes and assumptions off of it and those si those assumptions aren't correct you see that a lot in heads up too because the ranges are so wide and i think people are too used to their normal three bet ranges like they, they don't understand how like different spots are right I think I made a good fold, but like logically, you, like the thing is, most folds technically are supposed to be good folds. That's also what people don't realize. Like people who fold, like the people who are too nitty. The issue with some of you guys is like you're too focused on 50-50. So what I will say there is, part of poker is especially when you're putting less in the pot, like you're supposed to call a good amount. Like just because you're right, you can be right like 60% of the time in the spot I just was in, and it's like you're not even making money. Like you know what I'm saying? And then you can be right like. 60 like i don't know it's basically pot right so you could say 66 percent of the time yeah you're right 66 percent of the time you're break even like if you're right 80 like 75 percent of the time okay you're exploiting him like does that make sense like it just shows how much you should be calling you know and it shows how profitable bluffing is the issue is with bluffing is if you have too many bluffs you have to start slowing it down because then you're gonna be in, like maybe you're making mistakes elsewhere but yeah but if you're not getting exploited for it, it's usually fine. Like te technically, that's why. Like that's why. Um, if I'm just never calling with queens there, like obviously you could just bluff everything. So, that that's the thing about bluffing. Okay, he bets two, one big one here. Kind of tempted to call Loki. Okay, I guess he's betting a three for value. Okay, I don't know. Obviously, there, like, for example, I did never be good, but he does have air. If he never bluffs for that size, sure, but I guess we'll just keep seeing what he has. It's like, um, okay, so I'm cooked by a nine. I feel like I'd rather raise or fold this. If it's half pot. Does he snap call a nine? Dude, if he jams, I just want to call, like, Loki. Okay, good. You know what I mean? That's what I was thinking. Like, if the bo the river is... Yeah, dude, you're running so bad. Shit. 35, I'll just call. I run range, but it's the spot. 
I'm just gonna raise. It seems like bluffy when you raise, but that's also the exact same reason you can raise an eight. Um, because if he has a king, he's like, oh, it seems bluffy, but like, okay. Um, now when no spade comes in, we kind of block folds now, because he's gonna actually have to start folding some 10-4 spades and stuff like this. So the 10 of spades isn't the greatest blocker. Just jam. <laughs> it's not bad. I rolled an 86. I'm just going to do it. He might call me. This guy's kind of a psychopath. I could see myself just getting called by King Queen of Spades here. Damn, bro. That's crazy. To be fair, in his credit, he did call a really big raise. What a... You see? That's the advantage of being a reg. Like me, a genius. I know you guys are thinking, ah, this guy's not the best player I've ever seen in my life. Linus is better. Is he, though? Is he? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, everyone's troll. Everyone trolls me for my YouTube channel. Like, you did the dude. They're they're out here studying me. Dude, what what's with the flame? I'm getting flamed. I'm just a good guy making content for the average person. First block here. I mean, this hand in theory does want to raise. I don't know. I'm gonna be a nerd. Like stuff like that. Like every time people will assume, like, oh, like they always call, but they don't always call. Like in that spot, because you do have traps, right? So I would say in most spots, I think people are under bluffing in spots like that. So you just need to have enough bluffs that you need to keep your opponent honest, so you can get paid with value. Even if you under bluff the spot, like which you probably all will in that spot, unless you got, have a read on your opponent. Like first a wreck, I would bet big, but. And usually in spots where you don't expect to get credit for bluffs, those are the spots you should be bluffing at least somewhat. Um, yeah. Sorry with all the typing. <laughs> um, here generally you want to check range when your opponent gets up two sets or more because most of the time, they're in theory a lot of the range is pocket player uh, pairs. In practice, almost all the range is pocket pairs. Um, so he calls a check raise here. I don't mind just betting again for value. So this guy's just assuming I had a boat. And I'm just trolling with 10-7 of spades, man. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm the worst player ever, man. Anyway. I'm such a fucking troll. Like, obviously my hand blocks flush is better. The tennis spades isn't a good blocker. I mean, you block ace tennis spades, which is pretty relevant, I guess, but... And you block some pairs of the spade. 
Those are obviously gonna call you. I called here. I don't know if I like it. Multi way my hand kind of performs bad, but the fact that there was multi way action made me want to call more. But I don't know if that's actually a correct assumption. Because like how much like people always see uh, edge on the one pl one player, but like if the players aren't completely bad, like you just know like certain exploits about them that you can use. Like, do you really get that big of an edge multi-way? Like, they're just like a little nittier. Like, okay, so here we have like the goaded checkers in. But the issue is it's kind of like a check jam hand, like low key. And like, also is blocking three three relevant? Does he ever check it? Okay, so wait, what is the action here? Honestly, down. I rolled a high number too. Okay, I'm um, gonna be wrapping up the video here and continue recording. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one.